Coming up on Fulton Today, an update on legislation at the Capitol and the potential impact on the county. And at-risk high school students learn the importance of education during a trip to the county courthouse. Fulton Today is next. From the Government Center in downtown Atlanta, you're watching Fulton Today with Shania Chavis. Welcome to Fulton Today, everybody. I'm Shania Chavis. Fulton County commissioners lobby for themselves at the state capitol in an effort to influence bills that could impact county services, citizens, and employees. FGTV's Annalise Baker has our story. It has been a very busy General Assembly at the Capitol for both state and county elected officials. A number of Fulton County commissioners have made their presence known this session, given the potential impact a number of bills will have on the county. We need to have some dialogue with the senators of our uh, Fulton County delegation to talk about some of the bills that are being considered in the legislature right now that will have a negative and adverse impact on Fulton County. And so we wanted to keep the lines of communication open. We want to have some dialogue, but more importantly, work towards some sort of strategy. At the beginning of the session, the Board of Commissioners, by a vote of 5 to 2, officially opposed House Bills 170, 171, and 172. 170 increases the county's homestead exemption, 171 changes district lines and 172 changes the protected work status of Fulton County employees. Though all of the bills impact the county, House Bill 170 impacts the county's bottom line the most. If Bill 170 passes, it would raise the county's homestead exemption from $30,000 to $60,000 over a two-year time period. Now, raising the county's homestead exemption along with maintaining the current millage rate may sound attractive to the average homeowner because it would decrease property taxes and leave some homeowners not paying property taxes at all. And with less property tax revenue coming in, more county services would be cut like senior centers, libraries, and health centers. As the commissioners continue to officially push against many bills, they have gotten some support from state lawmakers. Since 1991, we've not raised the millage rate. No other county, no other county in the state of Georgia can say that. And they've balanced the budget. They're a sound government. Now it's always good to uh, get together with people that represent the constituents. We share constituents and uh, as county commissioners and as state legislators. And uh, we'd really like to do a lot more conferring than uh, time allows us to do as the session moves very fast. There has already been movement on some of the bills at the Capitol. However, the full impact of the state's actions won't be realized until the end of the session. At the state Capitol, I'm Annalise Baker for FGTV. Thank you very much, Annalise. Meanwhile, the Fulton County Fire Department is making another major move in an effort to save money and decrease response time. The department is relocating Station 15 in Palmetto to Cedar Grove Park. Fire Chief Larry Few explains the reasons behind the move. One of them being that uh, currently at existing Station 15, there's a railroad track. And at a certain time during the day, uh, navigating across that, we have to be careful of trains. So that's an encumbrance that we have to overcome. And though that may sometimes be a problem, there's an even more important reason behind the move. The other part of it is that uh, we look at the financial burden that we incur keeping um, existing Station 15. We pay about $5,100 a month. Uh, or a little bit more in the lease there. And Crew members will temporarily relocate to Station 17 while a prefabricated building is constructed. We chose this route because of the, the, the readiness and availability of that type of structure and how quickly it can be assembled. The temporary location is expected to be up by July. It will house two pieces of apparatus and 12 staff members. A rescue of a different kind has County Animal Services still looking for homes for dozens of abandoned cats. Many of the animals remain at the county's animal shelter. 30 cats were removed from a home in Alpharetta. The cats had been in the home since the owner died last summer. We had a call probably from a neighbor or you know a passerby that noticed there's a lot of cats. Um, no one was living there at the time. So we sent an officer out to check out the house. We could tell that there were animals inside. 
Animal services officers say the cats were living throughout the house and in between the walls. Veterinarians at the shelter have checked out the cats and many are ready for adoption. You definitely can come straight to the shelter and meet them. They're here, they're out in our cat room. You can interact with them. They have, you know, obviously all different personalities. So you can choose one um, that you like. You can also check out the cats on the Animal Services website or call the shelter and speak to someone about the adoptions. Bankers from all over the county teach seniors how not to become victims with their money. The Office of Aging and the Bank of America joined forces to host a series of financial information seminars at multi-purpose facilities. Topics included money management, free banking services, and how to avoid scams. I learned to beware of scams for one thing. I was amazed at the different ways they approach older people. And I think more and more older people need to be aware of this. I enjoy the um, information we receive about the free services the Bank of America has. Seniors were also reminded of changes in the U.S. Treasury check delivery system. They go into a direct deposit format. So ultimately it means that if seniors have an account and already have direct deposit, nothing changes. However, if they don't have an account, then the two things will happen. They will need to, from any financial institution, go open an account or uh, they will receive what we call it, what the government is calling a direct express card, which is just like a debit card, it has the Visa logo, what not on it, but they will be able to get their funds on that card and use it to do their purchases or anything else that they use the card for. According to the National Council on Aging, over 23 million Americans age 60 plus are economically insecure living at or below the federal poverty level. High school students get an up-close look at the consequences of at-risk behavior and the advantages of hard work. They are members of the non-profit organization called Project Lift. And FGTV's Tiffany Harlow has more on their recent tour of the county courthouse. Shawnee youth programs have always been a cornerstone of the work done at the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. Project Liftoff is just one of those programs targeting county youth, and it started this week with a trip to the Fulton County Courthouse. For Assistant District Attorney Todd Ashley, Project Liftoff is just one way to keep kids out of the courtrooms he works in every day. And helping kids reach their full potential is just another part of the job. I hope the students take from the tour that they can be anything that they want to be. This year, the tour included visits with Fulton County District Attorney Paul L. Howard Jr., Sheriff Ted Jackson, Fulton County Superior Court Judge Constance Russell, and Clerk of Court Tina Robinson. This message resonated most for Sydney Moultrie, who says her favorite aspect of the program is meeting professionals that want to invest in today's youth. They kind of just help us be successful in life and show us, they show us how, we, what we can do in order so that we could go on and be successful and they help us with our goals in life. A lot of these inmates fall behind in school and when they fall behind, they're kind of left behind. Think of this, if you have no skills and no education, what are you going to do with your life? The hope is that Project Liftoff will introduce youth to positive role models they can pattern their lives after and highlight the benefits of a good education. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Tiffany Harlow. Thank you very much, Tiffany. Still to come, Youth Enrichment Services move to the renovated Oak Hill Center. We'll have details and much more in our district by district coverage next. You're watching Fulton Today. South Fulton residents speak out about legislation at the state capitol and a Fulton County Commissioner gives his perspective on an important historical day. Here's this week's District by District coverage. We begin with the District 1 Commissioner as he joins panelists at the Atlanta Fulton Public Library to discuss the March on Washington. Chairman John Eaves gave his perspective on the historical event that took place in 1963. More than 250,000 people gathered in Washington, D.C. to support the civil rights protests and to listen to Dr. Martin Luther King's famous I Have a Dream speech. Certainly when you look at the March on Washington, there were two principal figures that are 
part and parcel with uh, Fulton County and the city of Atlanta, namely Congressman John Lewis, who's one of the speakers, as well as Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And so we have members of the academic community who are presenting their perspectives in terms of race relations. We are very, very fortunate to have a very diverse county. The National Journal reports that Congressman John Lewis was a speaker at the March on Washington at age 23. He served as the chair of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. SNCC. In District 5, Vice Chair Emma I. Darnell hosts a town hall meeting to discuss issues in her community. Citizens express their concerns and ask questions about traffic congestion, road construction, and public safety. One resident spoke about the need for lighting on Fairburn Road and the additional traffic expected to develop on Cascade Road because of a new Walmart currently under construction. County officials and City of Atlanta police were on hand to provide information to the public. It is very important, I believe, to listen, uh, not just talk. And we received very, very important information tonight. And we are looking forward to continuing to work with this community and with our partners at the city of Atlanta. Vice Chair Darnell held several town hall meetings last month regarding environmental justice legislation, economic development, land use, and quality of life issues. District 6 youngsters can now take advantage of the Youth Enrichment Services Program. YES is designed to help Fulton County teens in the areas of job placement and education. The Fulton County Office of Workforce Development moved the program from the old National Highway location to the Oak Hill Child, Adolescent, and Family Center. Having the YES program in District 6 is a major plus to the residents uh, of our community. Uh, having it located at Oak Hill will actually bring an opportunity to residents who often feel that they have no recourse or have access to services such as training and education. Fulton County's low-income youth between 16 and 21 years old can apply for the program. YES offers career and educational counseling, on-site recruitment events, and job readiness workshops. For more information, call the Oak Hill Child, Adolescent, and Family Center at 404-612-9084. And finally, in District 7, citizens packed the Cliftondale Multipurpose Center for Commissioner William Bill Edwards' first quarterly listening session of the year. Commissioner Edwards used the time to inform citizens about voting rights and House Bills 170, 171, and 172. The three pieces of legislation have been introduced at the Georgia State Capitol. A majority of the community expressed concerns about the House Bills and its overall effect on District 7. We've got to effectively make change. We've got to be the change that we want to see. The concerns with all these bills are going to really tear down Fulton County. The next District 7 listening session will take place on May 23rd at the Cliftondale Multipurpose Center in College Park. With this week's District by District coverage, I'm Daryl Peake. Thank you very much and when we come back rallying for more access and opportunities for citizens with disabilities. Stay with us. Watching Fulton Today. Portions of the following segment are part of the Fulton County Common Ground Initiative. Common Ground, the county's comprehensive solution to the problem of health disparities in the community. The 15th annual Disability Day at the Capitol is the focus of this week's Common Ground Report. FGTV's Lynn Vaughn attended with clients from the county's three training centers. They came from all over the state to advocate for greater access, opportunity, and integration into society. This year's theme posed the question, what's your connection? The executive director of the organization hosting the event had this answer. We are all connected, and if we have truly welcoming communities, it's about those relationships and about those connections. So go back and introduce yourself to somebody new when you go home. The keynote speaker, the state's chief executive. We, we are moving, I think, in a very positive direction to implementing what we have agreed in a settlement with the Department of Justice with regard to removing as many of those as we can from our hospital and institutional settings back into community-based settings. 
But there's another important linkage in all of this, and that is employability. As much as possible, we should attempt to do everything we can to provide employment opportunities to those with disabilities. Clients from all three of the county centers for the developmentally disabled were among the hundreds and hundreds who attended Disability Day at the Capitol. Well, I joined myself, meet everybody at the sun. Sylvia Franklin chaperoned the North Training Center group. Well, I'm proud to, to be able to bring a group of individuals down here and to let them know that there are people in high places who are making decisions that are important for them and, again, to make them feel like they are a part of this regular, everyday Main Street society. I thought it was great. What did you learn? Everything. From the Capitol, it was back to the train depot where participants had picked up their bright blue t-shirts that morning. Following the rally, everyone got to enjoy lunch at the freight depot. You know, long ago, Fulton County recognized, as the governor put it, that those with disabilities also have great abilities. The county is continuing its work to integrate the developmentally disabled into all facets of county life. In downtown Atlanta, I'm Lynn Vaughn, FGTV. Thank you very much, Lynn. Now, these exceptional services for the developmentally disabled are available at the South, Central, and North Training Centers. The contact information is right there on your screen. Visit FultonCountyGA.gov to find the locations and the phone numbers online. Our next story is about staying on top of your blood pressure. Health Services and the American Heart Association have joined forces to encourage all of us to monitor our BP. They held two sign-up and free blood pressure checks in the government center. They also have a program that's called Get to Goal. It allows you to monitor your blood pressure online with help from personal mentors. It even sends you email reminders. The program is designed so that individuals will actually take their blood pressure, monitor it, log into a secure website. Uh, it's called heart360.org forward slash Metro Atlanta, where they'll have their own individual health vault and actually put in their blood pressure. The free blood pressure checks were a hit with employees. Um, it's good to have this here. It shows that the county actually is taking and making an investment in their employees in terms of their health for the well-being, for their well-being. It gives you some heads up, you know, so if anyone needs to see their primary care physician, they can, you know, if they get a little information here, then you take a little further if you need to. I think it's a great thing that they're doing. Now to learn more about the Get to Gold program or to sign up to track your blood pressure, go to heart360.org slash Atlanta. Now here's an opportunity to walk, bike, or dance your way across Georgia online. Cooperative Extension Services is inviting everyone to exercise and to have company while you do it. Registration at walkgeorgia.com is free. You do whatever exercise you like for real, then begin keeping a record or log online. Now, once you accumulate miles, you can travel a virtual map of Georgia, getting health tips and learning facts about each county you visit. Now, you'll be able to compare your progress to that of other participants around the state. When you are participating in Walk Georgia, you can either participate as an individual or as a team of four. The team of four obviously gives you a built-in support system, but even if you're an individual, you have an opportunity to see where you may place in the top five of the state or the top five as the county. We also send out encouraging mess messages through Cooperative Extension to let folks know how they're doing. So this is one of those things where you can participate on your own, make a personal journey, but still feel part of a larger team. The deadline to register for Walk Georgia is Monday, March 11th. Everyone who participates is eligible to buy discounted tickets for the March 30th Atlanta Hawks game against the Orlando Magic. And you can only get them through the Walk Georgia website. Again, that's walkgeorgia.com. And still to come on Fulton today, an annual library program designed to get the entire community on the same page. We'll explain when we come back. You're watching Fulton Today. Well, long before social media and smartphones, 100 families understood the importance of documenting their past for future generations. 
The African-American family history in Georgia photos now hang in the Hammonds House galleries. They are on loan from the Auburn Avenue Research Library. Pictures as old as the 1860s offer a rare glimpse into African-American. But back then, it was a major deal to, one, uh, afford it, to, to document. And so this is a slice of our history that's rarely seen. Patrons are encouraged to share a slice of their family history by bringing a family photo to the exhibit now until April 28th. Now you can visit HammondsHouse.org for museum hours. And finally, a big event in the county could cause some to make a big change. The East Point Branch is just one of the libraries celebrating the Big Read. This year's annual community reading project highlights the book by Ernest Gaines, A Lesson Before Dying. Using Gaines's characters from the film version of the book, East Point Library staff hope that participants took a lesson away from the movie. It's important for teens to read and analyze this book because of the simple fact it gives you a chance to look at how life is. We have to understand that there's consequences in the decisions we make. Throughout the month, library patrons can participate in other big read activities. You can log on to the library's website to find an event. And before we go, our reminder that we'd like to hear from you about the stories and programs here on FGTV. Go to our website to take a survey or email or call us, the number 404-612-8317. The email address is fgtv.feedback at fultoncountyga.gov. You can also follow us on twitter.com slash fgtv, friend us on Facebook, and watch us on YouTube. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. I'm Shawnee Chavis. Thank you for joining us. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County.